Welcome to this edition of Maintenance Minute. Now there's boating fun and then there's maintenance. And one of the toughest jobs you're going to handle aboard your boat is when the time comes for you to strip all the bottom paint off your hull. To make that job a little easier, Pettit Paint has introduced a new product they call BioBlast 9051. Now BioBlast is a chemical paint stripper that is biodegradable, fast acting, and non-carcinogenic. Helping me out with today's project will be Simon Pajot of ChemSolve, the Canadian-based company that manufactures the product for Pettit. Also along with a pair of helping hands is Roger Greer, Pettit's technical field manager. Now our project boat is waiting for us up on the hard, so let's get to it. Unique thing about this product is that it's highly effective. Uh, other boat products or so other anti-fouling removers do exist, paint strippers that are designed to remove anti-fouling or bottom paint as it is called. Uh, do exist on the market. This one has a particularity in that it is very efficient and very fast. Others will take 10 to 14 hours. This one will take 15 to 45 minutes. So a tremendous advantage for you uh, as a boat owner or as a boat yard. The first step in this project is to cover the waterline with masking tape so as to protect it against the chemical stripper. Once we've got that done, we lay down our tarps in order to collect the residue from the paint being stripped off. Remember, while this stuff is biodegradable, the bottom paint on your boat is not. We first pour the BioBlast into a paint tray. And as you can readily see, the material is quite viscous and will stay where it's put. Using large, wide brushes, we apply the BioBlast to the hull of our project boat and put it on as thick as possible. This first test scraping is about 30 minutes after applying the product. Our ambient temperature was a bit on the cool side and the hull was somewhat cold from the night before, so we decided to reapply the BioBlast and wait a little while longer. After an additional 30 minutes, and while some spots required a little more elbow grease, the material is clearly getting down to the gel coat. And once the air temperature kicked in and warmed things up for us, the BioBlast, along with years of bottom paint, came off in sheets. To finish this part of the job, we wiped down the hull with solvent, Pettit's Bottom Prep Dewaxer 95, to remove any contaminants. Whatever residue is left will be taken care of when we sand the hull down in preparation for applying the new bottom paint. Here's what the hull looked like before BioBlast, and here's how it looked after. Before we get to the sanding, Roger and I wash the hull with fresh water to remove any residue we might have missed. As you can see, the water sheets off the bottom of the hull while beading above the waterline, indicating that all the wax and contaminants are off the bottom. There's no getting around this part of the job, so I've always found it best to just dive into it. We're using 80 grit paper on our random orbital sanders, and as you can see, we're wearing safety glasses and a dust mask. Okay, now that we've got the entire hull sanded, we're gonna tack cloth it down, look for any shiny spots. We'll take care of those, tack cloth it once again. And then we're ready for our first coat of paint. Besides being labor intensive, one of the things you might discover when taking on a project like this is once you've got all the paint stripped off the bottom, you're going to uncover some nicks, some dings, or some other imperfections in the gel coat that must be taken care of before any bottom paint goes on. Also, you might uncover some repairs that were done in the past that are starting to show their age, and these two must be fixed right away. Now, Roger and I found a couple of things back here in the transom. We're gonna have a look at them. We're gonna assess what we have to do. We're gonna take care of it and then we'll get to our painting. What I found was that right along the edges is the beginning of what looks like delamination. And after speaking with the owner, I discovered the repair was actually a permanent lifting surface that was put in to help get the bow of the boat down while running. What we're gonna do, we're gonna use a petted product called Flex Poly, and we're gonna fix this thing right up. Now, I have here um, a little sample of the material, as you can see here. This piece of wood's been notched out and the Flex Poly's been put in here. It's a really hard stuff, um, quite uh, workable. It's got about a 15 minute uh, pot life. And uh, once it hardens, 
it can be screwed in. So uh, Roger's gonna lead us through the technical aspects of this stuff. We're gonna mix up a batch. We're gonna put it on here, smooth it down, let it set up, sand it smooth. We'll be ready to go on our bottom paint. Roger begins by mixing the material. Getting the correct ratio is the most crucial part of doing any epoxy repair. This is because there's a need for a precise chemical reaction between the two parts that will enable the flex epoxy to do its job. And Pettit has packaged it in a precise mixing tube. Roger then kneads the material, one blue and the other clear, together until the color changes to a pale pink, indicating it's ready for use. Even in this state, it's got superior gravity resisting properties and will not shrink. And if necessary, it can accept a small amount of pigment to mask a repair. Flexpoxy has about a 15 minute pot life, which is plenty of time in which to do our repair. Here, Roger applies it with a flexible plastic putty knife, making sure to work the material not only along the line of the repair, but wide enough to ensure a proper watertight barrier once it kicks and cures. Pettit recommends an overnight cure with an ambient temperature of about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Before we get to painting the bottom, Roger and I take the water line. While it's obviously easier to get the line straight with two working together, you can get it right by, as everything else we've done here so far, being careful and working slowly. It would be a shame after all this hard work to end up with a wavy water line. Since the owner decided on this color for his bottom paint, we're going to blend four parts blue and one part yellow of Pettit's Vivid to get the right mix. Vivid is a powerful multi-season dual biocide anti-fouling paint that although hard, possesses ablative qualities that allow it to wear away slightly over time while keeping a slick surface. After mixing the paint, Roger uses this special extended drill bit, which by the way looks a lot like the one I used to make my world famous chocolate chip cookies, to thoroughly combine the colors, blending back and forth until the proper shade is achieved. It may take a while to do, but it's important for consistency throughout the application to get the color just right. We begin by pouring our mixed vivid bottom paint into a tray and adding a capful of solvent to allow the paint to flow on nice and easy. We then mix up the paint a bit with our tight nap thin roller. Using this kind of roller ensures we will have control over the coverage by being able to concentrate on specific size areas rather than trying to cover large sections of hull space. Once the roller is saturated with paint, it's time to get that first coat on the hull. With the both of us working, the application goes quickly and as you can readily see, our coverage is complete. And before we know it, Roger and I are done with the first coat. We also make sure we do the places where the braces were placed, here towards the aft end. And after a quick sanding, a coat of paint is applied. Okay, well, we've just about finished our first coat of bottom paint. And Roger and I are gonna check to see if we missed any spots or where the paint thinned out. We'll touch those up. As you can see, my hands are relatively clean. We had a nice clean job. Now we're gonna go to lunch, we're gonna let this stuff dry. It's nice and warm today. If we come back and it's dry to the touch, we'll be good to go on our second coat. If not, we're most likely gonna to have to let it dry overnight, come back tomorrow morning, put on our second coat, let that dry, and then this boat's hitting the water. Well, as luck would have it, that first top coat was dry by the time we got back from lunch. So we applied the second one. We're gonna let this one dry overnight. Tomorrow morning, we tackle the bootstripe. Like a great painter that puts their name on their work, so it goes with the bootstripe. After all, no one's going to see under your boat, but your waterline is a different story. But before this nautical piece de resistance, there is a bit of prep work to do. And like all painting projects, it's time to get out the sandpaper. This time, it's 150 grit paper, although 220 will do with just enough grit to scruff up the paint. And this is how the surface should appear once it's all done. After a quick wipe down with solvent or a solution of two cups of household ammonia to every gallon of water to get the dust and any contaminants off, it's time to tape the line. If there is any mildew on the surface, you must first clean it with a solution of bleach instead of the ammonia. Again, with the two of us working together, the odds of getting a straight line is vastly increased. 
but I've done many a job by myself and found that slow and steady gets it done. So take whatever time you need to make sure it's where it's supposed to be. To finish off our project, we'll be using Pettit's Easy Poxy. According to the company's technical bulletin, silicone has been added to this polyurethane topside and deck enamel that makes it easy to apply and results in a lustrous shine. In addition, ultraviolet filters provide the product with enhanced gloss retention and durability. While Roger rolls, I follow along and brush the paint out. And by this time you realize that while having somebody to help out on a job like this makes it go a lot easier, you can, and if you are careful and work slowly, do this by yourself. Well, that takes care of our bootstripe. All we have left to do is to let this dry. I'll meet you over at the travel lift for our wrap up, and then we're gonna launch this boat. This, as they say, is the moment of truth. And as I peel off the tape, it looks like all the hard work did pay off. We've gone from a bottom layered with years of bottom paint to one that we took down to the gel coat using Pettit's Bioplast chemical paint stripper, after which we sanded, washed, painted, and finally launched. There's your snow getting around it. Stripping all the bottom paint off a hull is a time-consuming, messy, and labor-intensive job. But it can be made just a little easier with a product like Bioblast. Now, the most important thing about working with Bioblast is ambient temperature. The hull has to be warm, and the air temperature has to be warm. If those two things are in place, this product will make this tough job just a little easier. I'd like to thank Simon Pajot of Greensolve, the Canadian-based company that supplies the product to Pettit, as well as Roger Greer, Pettit's technical field manager, for all his hard work on this project. Hope you enjoyed your time in the boatyard. We'll see you next time on PMY's Maintenance Minute.